Hello, this is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at excel-worktemplates.com so that you're sure to get the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques for making your Excel dashboards. Today I had a request from a user from Portugal. Uh, not sure exactly how to say his name. I think it's Joa. And uh, he was wondering how he could make a chart in Excel only show the visible rows that he wanted to show. Um, and not show blanks. So what you see over here is in this chart, he's got a 3D column chart. It's showing F, J, L, N, and T. And if you come over to our data, you'll notice that he's actually put a filter on column O so that uh, if there's a value in column O, uh, it stays. And if it's blank, it hides as a part of the filter. Now watch what happens when I change the filter here and add the blanks back in. Uh, Joa does not want to do the um, filter every time uh, he wants to leave his data like this and wanted to know how can I only show uh, the times where there's actually data but not the ones where there's blanks. Uh, for instance what he'd like to do is he wants to go up to column L here and he wants to pick a different value from this pick list and notice his chart will change uh, but he would have to do a new filter and get rid of the rows to only show four instead of five. So uh, how can we go about doing that? Well, let's go ahead and show you that way. Um, what you want to do is you want to make a separate charting data set. So uh, this data set that I have over here in column Y and column Z is actually going to be what we're going to show um, for the visible ones. And as your data changes and you change that pick list, it will only show uh, the ones that have data in column O. So you never have to filter your range. So, okay, so what we need to do is create an array formula that is going to look and see how many values are in column O. And then let's use index and match to actually return each value that is not blank in column O. So, how we're going to do that is we're going to start out with an if statement. And we first want to count how many values are in column O. And let's lock that down to make sure it's an absolute reference. And we want to check and see if that is greater than or equal to a count, um, a counter, if you will. And so we're, this is going to be a running total. And we use the rows function in order to do that most times. It doesn't really matter where you start this rows function because it's going to be just used as a counter. Uh, and let's go ahead and add in the end of it. But what I want to do is I want to go back in here and actually change one of these to lock it down um, so that 34 never moves. And then as we copy it down, the second one does move. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and once it gets above the count that we have in O, the formula will stop. So what we need to next do is type in index, and we're going to use the index function to return what we want in our x-axis. And so our x-axis is going to be over here in column K, and we're going to lock that down by hitting F4. And, but we need to know which one of those matches what's over in column O. And in order to do that, we're first going to have to do a match. And what we want to match is the small um, and we'll talk about small here in a second, but we want to check an array that if the length of what's in column O, and this is where our array formula is going to take over, and make sure you make that an absolute reference as well. Um, and so we can say if the length of, all, of column O is greater than zero, then that's what we want it to return what row. is that in column O. Let's make sure that's an absolute reference. And <clears throat> if it's false, we don't want it to return anything. Uh, and we need a counter also for the small function because it needs to make sure it keeps incrementing. And we're going to do this with rows of O dollar sign 34 through And that's small, and then for the match, um, we actually want that to be an exact match type. Oops, it looks like I made an error in there, so let's look at the formula. Uh, so the lookup value, the last one was 
for the array of small. It looks like I might have missed a parenthesis in here. Let's see. So that one is the if statement. This is the counter for rows. So we've ended our small function. Now we're back into our lookup array. So what we want to return here in our lookup array is actually the row call of O. Let's lock that down. Oops. Let's, let's try that once again. And we want to make sure that this is an exact match. And we want to return the first column of our index, and that since we only have one column, that's what we're going to put in there anyway. And if all of this is, uh, if the counter goes above our count, we just want to return a blank. And so if we hit Control Shift Enter, we get the value of F. So it worked. Our formula, if you look over here, F is the first one where it is actually greater than zero, and it's returning F. We can now copy this down all the way down to the end of our data set. And we get F, J, L, and T. So those are the ones where the value is greater than zero. And it's blank after it hits that counter of greater than or equal to five. Uh, and then you can copy this entire formula over by just going in here like this and copying the formula. Go into your data points column. And what you want to do here is paste it. But we want to change the index from being K to actually being the O column. That way it will return the value of the O column. Oops, I didn't hit Control Shift Enter. So again, this is an array form, so you have to do that. And now you'll see F data point is 18.235, and we got F is 18.235. And if I copy this down, it is going to match up each one of the ones that are not blank. And essentially it's going to collapse our range for the values that are greater than zero. So this is how we're going to set up our chart. And uh, we're going to need to combine these complex array formulas with an offset function in order to make our charts. So let's go ahead and do that right now. First, what we want to do is create uh, some formulas. Up on the formula bar, we want to define names for these two different x-axis and data points. So if you go up to your formulas ribbon, go create from selection and it will create uh, two different uh, names. Uh, we want to use the top row as our names and click on OK. I've already got these names set up, so let's just go take a look at the name manager here. Um, what we have is for the x-axis uh, was created, and we need to change this formula in here um, for what we actually want in our x-axis. So we're going to type in our offset formula equals to offset and Offset always works with a set space of where you want to start. We're going to start in this case at Y34. And it says how many do you want to move down, how many do you want to move over. And uh, we actually don't want it to move down any, so we can put in a zero. We don't want it to move over any. We want it to start from that reference point. And then we, what we want to do is we want to actually do a count. We want to do a count of column O, and that with the parentheses, and we want it to return just uh, the first column. So we click on that. Let's move this over to the side. Now you'll notice if I click in here, see the dancing ants are actually going to show for my x-axis only those five data points. Uh, we can copy this formula and then go up to our data points name that we created and do something very similar uh, and paste it and instead of doing Y what we want to do is we want to do Z as our data point. Click on this little checkbox. I click in here you notice the dancing ants are around Z uh, 34 through Z 38 or so uh, and as your formulas change these will continue to update. These are going to be the two reference points that we're going to put in our chart. So let's go over and actually copy the chart uh, that Joa had done before. So I'm going to copy this chart. I'm just going to come over here so we can see this a little better and paste it. Uh, let me get this in the range. There we go. So um, what I want to do is I want to come into this chart, click anywhere in the chart, go up to the design ribbon, click on select data, 
and in the select data what we want to do is we want to edit the series and we want to change this from an actual absolute reference here and put in that named value. In this case it was going to be data underscore points. We have to do it with this first leading part of the name there. Click on OK. And then we want to edit the horizontal category labels. Same thing, you want to leave, go right after that exclamation point and put in the name. We call this one X underscore axis. Click on OK. Click on OK. And look at that. Our chart is now updated um, so that it only shows those five data points. If we come up here and we actually change this from 3.5t to uh, this first value, Notice that it goes HPVZ, and our data points for the data chart here are only showing four values instead of five. So he no longer has to filter his data. He can actually just come in and use this pick list to change his values. The formulas update in the chart range to grab and sort the appropriate amounts, and then we use those over in uh, the offset chart. So uh, to learn a little bit more about um, offset charts, please visit my blog. Uh, there's several posts out there on how to use offset formulas in charts in case uh, you need to learn a little bit more about the offset function. Uh, and then there's lots of stuff on the web and we'll have some other tutorials on how to create array formulas uh, so that you can do this for lots of different data sets. Once again, this is Steve Equals True. Please make sure you sign up for my YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to sign up for my blog at excel-boardtemplates.com so that you're sure to get the latest post directly in your inbox. Thank you.